All right, so this is part two um, of my sort of financial history and uh, my work history. Um, so I basically left off um, working as a mechanic and um, I think I was making about $16. I was making about $15 an hour, 15 hours a flat rate hour when I was at the independent garage. Um, so you only get paid for the jobs that you actually, you know, turn. If you work slowly, you get paid less. And then uh, at the um, diesel truck installing company, I was, I think I was making $15 as well, but it was, it was just by the hour, $15 an hour, no matter how productive I was. And so um, I found myself at this shop. I wasn't a huge fan of what I was doing. Um, and I wasn't, I was kind of in like this real, like being an automotive mechanic, like there's millions of them worldwide, you know, and what I was doing was like very niche. It wasn't, it was, it was like very specialized and not that, you know, special. And anyway, it was, it was relatively simple compared to being an engine mechanic, um, or an automotive mechanic, which required more of like the diagnosis and the thinking and all of that. It was really just kind of installing. So it felt more like production work. Anyway, it's probably not interesting. So I was, um, I was doing something and I got a call. This was probably October, November of uh, just, just after high school. So I'd only been out of high school like four months. And, um, and, and I got a call from a company called TTI out of Auburn Hills. And they said, you know, hi, James, uh, we're a contract house for Volkswagen of America, and we find your resume on the internet, and we'd like to, con we'd like to consider interviewing you for a job. And uh, I literally said like, oops, I'm sorry, I forgot to remove my resume from the internet. I'm not looking for a job anymore. And uh, she's like, okay, well, let me just tell you about the job anyway. And so she told me a little bit about the job. I think her name was Jen. And um, and as I'm listening, I was kind of thinking like, well, I don't really like this job that I have right now. Like maybe it's not such a bad thing to think about something else. And, and, and so like at one point she literally was like, so are you looking for a job or no? And I was like, yeah, I guess I am, you know, just like a total idiot. And um, so she she basically said, okay, we'll set up a time for you to interview. Now, what you should also know, because I think all of this kind of coincides, is um, after high school, I decided to go to college. Um, I decided to go to a local community college. My parents uh, generously and graciously had set aside $10,000 for me to pursue college. And... Um, I was extremely entitled and ungrateful for that because I went to a private school where uh, people were buying their 16 year old kids uh, Porsches for their birthday. And uh, I look back on that with an extreme amount of shame and regret that I was so um, narrow sighted to think that my parents setting aside money for me uh, wasn't to be thanked. Um, and I'll say one more thing about that in a few minutes at the Volkswagen place. But anyway, so I was taking a physics class and a calculus class and an automotive electrical class. So the first two classes were basically because I thought I wanted to be an engineer. And the third class was because the part of automotive stuff that was really tripping me up was electrical. So after like three or four weeks, I was doing really bad in the physics and calculus class, but I was getting an A in the electrical class. And uh, I was so naive to think that at a community college you'll find community i was heard like oh you all the friends you make in college you keep them for life and that doesn't happen at a community school as you may know and all my years of sleeping through algebra and cheating through geometry and skipping pre-calculus had put me in a position where I, I just couldn't even touch the calculus and the physics and so i sat down with my father one night and i basically said like hey i I would like to drop out of college. I'd like to drop the two classes, keep the other class. But like, I'm, I'm very much afraid to be like the guy who dropped out of college. And it just seems like that guy's life never goes in the right direction. And, and so basically I want to do it with your blessing and with your uh, permission, essentially, even though I didn't really need his permission to drop off. I was still living at home. Um, and one of the things that I told my dad is basically like, I have chosen my path uh, with, without considering at all what the Lord might have planned for me. So if you've watched my channel, you may know that I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Um, I align my life as best as possible to what I read in the scriptures. And I had sort of chosen this future life for myself of engineer, mechanic, all of this. And, and I really, I hadn't prayed about it. I hadn't read the Bible about it. I, I hadn't even really considered, you know, that, that maybe, the Lord had something specific for me. And so I dropped out of college, those two classes, and um, 
I took one week to fast and pray. And um, at the end of that week of fasting and praying, I was in a church service on Friday night and uh, we sung some songs and then there was a sermon. And um, during one of the songs after the service, I had the most intense experience of my entire life where I believe that I heard God's voice. And it was um, essentially louder than any audible voice I've ever heard. Um, it, it, it almost felt like it would hurt my head. And uh, of course my friends were next to me and they didn't hear anything, so it wasn't literally audible. But um, I, I heard a voice say one thing, one thing only, the word theology. And um, it's, of course, it's impossible for me to describe the intensity with which this experience took place. Um, this, this, this voice inside my head felt immensely powerful. And I remember at the time, first of all, I was absolutely terrified. I mean, literally, I, I fell to my knees. I was crying because it was so intense. Um, and I remember at that time thinking that was the voice of the person who has created this world. You know, it wasn't like, oh, that's Jesus or, oh, that's Jehovah. It, 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 was, it was more vague than that. It was more basic than that. It was just like, that is the voice of something or someone so powerful that, that they're responsible for all of this. Anyway, that word was theology. And, um, I, and I quickly applied to and got accepted Cornerstone News University in Grand Rapids and planned to go study theology. Anyway, that's kind of all part of this which is why I mentioned it, although I know it's not interesting to some people and that's fine. So I, um, I drive out to Volkswagen. It was a full hour from, my, it was 40 minutes, uh, 40 miles, 60 minutes from my house. And I walk into the lobby and there's like marble floors and leather furniture. It's very fancy, at least to me. And um, I remember there was a Bentley Continental sitting in the lobby because Bentley's owned by Volkswagen. And uh, the, the, I think the Maroni label said that this Bentley Continental GT cost $193,000. And I sat there on this couch and I'm almost certain I didn't even wear a tie to the interview. And I had like black grease underneath my fingernails and I almost walked out. I mean, I felt so out of place. I, felt, I mean, it was just like so intimidating. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I, I I, I just felt like I was a loser grease monkey who, who had no place there. And um, the the outside console, the TTI contract house, uh, she was there and uh, she met with me. And then I met, the, the I, I was interviewed by two people, a guy named Fred who became my boss, the guy to hire me, and a guy named Keith, another engineer at the company. And they interviewed me for about an hour. It was an awesome interview. Like it was so exhilarating. They asked me tough questions. I had interesting answers. They asked me some technical questions about cars. I got some of them right. I got some of them wrong. Um, and I remember I, um, you know, they asked me questions like, you know, like James, you're, you know, you're 18. Um, what's going to keep you coming to work every day, you know, and not going and partying with your friends. And so, I mean, they just asked me all kinds of interesting questions, many of which I've forgotten. And I remember afterwards I called my dad, um, and he said, how'd it go? And, and I said, you know, they, they may not like who I am or what I have to offer, but it, I, I got to show them who I am and what I have to offer. Like it was a very transparent, like this is who I am. This is what I can do, what I can't do. And, and so it felt like I had really well represented what I was and whether what I was, was I was, it was anything they wanted or not, who knows. But so, um, yeah, like three days later, they called me the contract house and they said they wanted to offer me a job as a contractor. And uh, she, she said, she said they'd like to offer me a salary. I think it was $32,000 a year, or maybe 31 or 30. <laughs> and, and I said like, oh, I don't know what that means. Can you tell it to me in, in dollars per hour? <laughs> and um, so she, uh, she did a quick calculation and it was like, I think it was like 1495 per hour or something. And I was like, oh, well, that's a little bit less than I make right now. And it's a really long drive. So I was hoping to make a little bit more and, so she says like, okay, give me one second. So she like puts me on hold and she comes back like 90 seconds later. She's like, okay, we can offer you $35,000 a year. And she's like, that'll be like 1635 or something. I'm like, okay, cool, the raise, you know? And so I'm, st I'm standing in my parents' basement where I had, I had moved 
my parents had this really nice, they had this small but nice house and the second floor was just, I forget what they call it in architectural terms, but the second floor was one room and one bathroom. So it was kind of like a apartment and, and it was mine. And I moved out of there into the basement because the basement uh, wasn't finished. And so I could take apart motorcycle engines and car parts on the floor and get grease all over the floor and not worry about the carpet. So I was, I was literally living in my parents' basement for a while. And so I was in that basement and I accepted this job. And um, yeah, so so I I saw it as, I, I saw that fully then and I see it fully now as the same. And that was God opening a door for me and offering me a second chance. Because from an academic perspective, I had completely set the trajectory of my life you know, in a, in a bad way. And, and you, you can be a mechanic your whole life and live a good life. And I'm not trying to say otherwise. Um, but, but I had, I had really squandered what I had been given. I had been given opportunities at a good education and I had completely squandered them. And, and so there's a difference between someone who has the potential to be a mechanic and nothing more and is a great mechanic. And I love those people. I know many of them. And there's a difference between that and someone who could have been much more and squandered it and then comes in at mechanic level, if, if those terms don't seem too offensive to everybody. Um, and, and so I, I, I think that people have different potential. And um, I think that uh, when someone works up to that potential, then we all should be cheering, regardless of what that potential is. But when people squander their potential and, um, you know, sort of live half the life that they could have, then I think that's a shame. And that's essentially what I had done to myself is I had put myself under that trajectory to do exactly that. So I started at Volkswagen on January 2nd, 2007, which was almost exactly six months after I graduated high school. Uh, I, I was 19. I'd been 19 for like one and a half months. And um, I, I started, I had medical benefits, I had 401k stuff, um, and uh, I started making $35,000 a year. So I'm going to move on to part two, which is uh, probably will be a little bit shorter. Part three, the next couple of jobs I had at Volkswagen and my progression through there and um, how that may be an encouragement to you uh, in your life's journey.